from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in San Francisco for the Samsung Developer Conference, SDC 2017. I'm John Furrier. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage, and I'm excited to have an amazing guest, Mana Kulong, who's a chief storyteller, Women in Tech International, <laughs> Tech TV, Tech Zulo. She's been uh, really a, a storyteller in digital for a long time. Great to have you on. Been following all your Twitter sphere and your content. Thank you. You did some work with Leo Laporte, Jason mm -hmm. Kilcanis, both this week in tech's kind of version of, of the scene. Mm -hmm. What are you up to now? Well, I am working very closely with Women in Technology International, WITI. It is the largest, oldest organization for women in tech. They have a huge summit that they put on in San Jose every year, and I'm sort of the class clown for that and MC the conference and you know, lead the charge there. Well, certainly yeah. you know that what's interesting, you have kind of a cool vibe, you're a cool person, um, you know tech, mm -hmm. you know cloud computing, mm -hmm. you, you, you've been in, inside baseball for the tech scene, mm -hmm. but now the consumer market with digital, yeah. pretty powerful, I mean it's like, finally us geeks are now have a <laughs> national and global stage mm -hmm. to flex our geekness, so you see, Nerds We're suddenly cool. Cool to be a geek, and now you see, well, <laughs> the programmer culture's over, thank God. <laughs> well, I is was, it? You know, well, I mean, <laughs> well, the bad side of it, the good yeah. side of the of the democratization is happening. So right. like, now you have an augmented reality. So mm -hmm. it's just some cool stuff happening. Mm -hmm. What are you most impressed with? What am I most impressed with? Well, I love blockchain. Uh, I've been involved with some of that for three or four years now. I actually had a podcast uh, about blockchain and, and Bitcoin, and I'm really excited about what that means for investment, specifically, mm -hmm. and uh, ICOs, initial coin offerings. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Brock Pierce is a big, big figurehead with all of that, with blockchain mm -hmm. capital, and uh, I, I believe that, especially for women that are looking to get into investment and uh, get back in the earlier stage of things, um, I think ICOs, initial coin offerings, are a huge opportunity for them to really change up yeah. the, the, the venture world. So when you say ICOs, which mm -hmm. we know a lot about, because we're doing mm -hmm. one at Silicon Angle the uh, yeah. next couple quarters, um, no rush to do it, but we're going to mm -hmm. be introducing our own cryptocurrency. Yeah. But there's nuances. When you say investment, do you mean as an alternative to see venture capital investment, or actually investing in, say, the currency itself? Both, um, but I, I think of it as a completely new way to invest in companies. Um, and there, there's so many barriers, especially for women in technology, again, that's a big platform for me, um, to, to getting into that world, that ICOs just are completely changing up the entire the entire ecosystem there. Well, we've seen, you know, we're seeing a mm -hmm. ton of stuff. We saw, we saw, you know, Lisa Fetterman was on mm -hmm. earlier. She had a huge success with her Kickstarter. Now she's yep. got some pretty glamorous products. Yeah. The cooking thing is pretty sexy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that thing could sous -vide, go. Sous vide, even the term it's sous vide. Just, I, I would, mean, it's so fresh. I would fresh. put money into that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, but that was a good, good example of Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But look at the, some of the ICOs. A lot of people are raising some serious amount of capital mm -hmm. in utility, in utility and right. stock or securities. Mm -hmm. Although the regulations are a moving train, but on the utility side, it's a no-brainer. There's some significant cash being raised mm -hmm. in some cases from five to say 50 million plus. Yep. In token sales. Mm -hmm. So that's that's like a Kickstarter on steroids. It really is, and some people are afraid of it. You know, some people are saying that's that's completely absurd. Why would you ever do that? I personally would say, don't put all of your eggs in one basket either. Mm -hmm. We know that um, there's volatility anywhere. Uh, but I, again, I think it's opening a lot of doors and yeah. and giving certain people opportunities that they didn't have before. So how is your Bitcoin position these days? I may have been an early investor in some Bitcoin. I may obsessively look at the value every 15 minutes or so, no. <laughs> I, I am fortunate. I listened to my mentors, and luckily I love emerging yeah. techs, so I'm doing yeah. well in that regard. I saw a post on <laughs> Facebook, if you just bought $10 in Bitcoin and smoked weed and sat on the beach and clipped coupons all day and did nothing else, you'd be worth $20 million. Let's just say I know people that have actually bought castles with it. <laughs> I'm not joking. So there's, <laughs> but there's an, what about, like about the crypto blockchain side is that there's mm -hmm. an early um, community growing. So yep. what's your, what's your uh, analysis? Because a lot of people want to know, is it, is it Silk Road guys? Are they bad actors? Bitcoin's the underbelly of the internet, <laughs> early adopter. Those stories were so funny at the beginning. I mean, everyone, lo I live in LA. Everyone loves the sensationalized story. 
And of course that existed with Bitcoin too. And yes, there was some truth to it. Well, of and course yes, it was, yeah. absolutely, the Silk Road story you know, was real. Anonymous and encrypted oh, transactions. Oh yes, and there's that's <laughs> going to attract some honey to the bees. <laughs> there's a reason why certain people can't come back into the country. Let's just leave it at that. However, however, we've also seen major financial institutions get on board. Yeah. Uh, you know, fintech has exploded. Uh, there's a lot of legitimacy to blockchain yeah. and the distributed yeah. ledger technology. Well, it's one of the fastest growing projects on the Linux Foundation, the Hyperledger project. Yes. Which is just. Out of, just going gangbusters, IBM's behind it. Yep. So it's got that open source vibe, I get that, but mm -hmm. the community, talk about the community, mm -hmm. because there are people who are leading the community, you said you know a few of them. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the community? How big is it? It's emerging, obviously it's growing. Mm -hmm. And what's the protocol for new entrants coming in? Sure. What's the behavior norms? It's, it's grown in leaps and bounds, I can say that. I mean, from the time I did my uh, Bitcoin podcast a, num a, few, a few years ago to now, it, back then it was, very much the bro culture to a degree. Um, a lot of libertarians, <laughs> um, a lot of folks that couldn't come back in the country, yeah. to be quite honest. Uh, but there were certain people that came out of that movement though, like Brock yeah. Pierce, that really thought ahead to how do we legitimize this? How do we make sure that this is white knighted? <laughs> yeah. So to speak. Well, it's a revolutionary. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's fundamental. I had the founder of Alibaba Cloud on the record. Mm -hmm. I haven't published a video yet, so this is exclusive material. He said, I asked him about blockchain. He says it's fundamental to the internet. It, it is, is the internet, mm -hmm. just like TCP/IP was in the stack. Absolutely. He was adamant that this is not on top of the internet. Mm -hmm. It's fundamental. To, it's about blockchain. Yep. Absolutely, because it's, it's supply chain, it's mm -hmm. currency, it's mm -hmm. a zillion things. Yeah, but it's, it's not just coins. Everyone focused in on Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. It's a distributed ledger technology. So it goes hand in hand with the Internet of Things. Yeah. So the two have become very very much married in that yeah. regard. You know, all these guys I interview on theCUBE over the years, and certainly I lived through it, talk about the waves, mm -hmm. the PC wave. They mm -hmm. talk about the client server wave. Client server essentially yeah, it's not so much about the mini computers, because the mini computers were not the client server wave, because that was proprietary operating systems and um, proprietary hardware mm -hmm. from Sun, HP. Right. What made client server was TCP IP. Mm -hmm. That created 3Com, Cisco, yep. interoperability. So that really was that second wave. People are comparing blockchain to TCP in the case of I can Dr. See that. Wong from Alibaba Cloud. Mm -hmm. Other people are saying like the dot com bubble, the, the euphoric yeah. excitement. So that begs the question, who can bring functionality, this is my thesis, I want to test it with you, mm -hmm. who can bring functionality and simplicity? Because all the successes <laughs> in Web 1.0 mm -hmm. was Yahoo, a directory of links. Mm -hmm. Simple, easy to right. use. Cisco routers, connect your networks, it mm -hmm. works. So simplicity and functionality seems to be the norm in the blockchain world. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Can you share your, your uh, reaction to that? Simplicity and functionality, I mean, for me, it's... In terms the of the winners versus the losers. Because sure. that's what people want to know at blockchain. Mm -hmm. Where's the scams and where's the legit? Mm -hmm. Well, the <laughs> scams are the people that came from the gaming side that had real, no real business <laughs> expanding out the way that they did and everybody loses their, their coin. Uh, but we won't name names there. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's more... Okay to name names. <laughs> but with functionality, I mean, Again, I, I keep going back to its, its marriage with IoT, you know, the, the, the ledger-based technology and just being able to do anything transactional. Um, that, that's the simplicity of it for me, the fact that it's, the fact that it's open source, the fact yeah. that, um, yeah, I, I think that's so the, the So let's call it Samsung. We're mm -hmm. here at the Samsung event. Sure. How do you see these guys? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about blockchain, it's kind of the next big wave coming. Yep. Obviously, a lot of things underneath that, but above that, you've got software machine learning, mm -hmm. all the goodness of open source is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. That wave is coming to exponential yeah. growth in open source mm -hmm. code shipments, right. meaning more people using open source, and things yeah. like blockchain. How does that impact a Samsung, an Apple, an Amazon? Well, I think open source is necessary for IoT specifically, you know, obviously. Um, that we'd be shut down without that. Um, I've been talking with a lot of the developers here, the Samsung specific people saying, what is it that, that is exciting you about this forward movement? Like with the keynote this morning, what, what do we need? How do we move this entire industry forward with, with IoT? And they're excited about the, the, the platform that Samsung has announced this morning in terms of just the ubiquity of, of everything working together mm -hmm. um, in, com in comparison to, well, a lot of other 
<clears throat> Sorry, quick sip. So the crypto thing is also tying into that too. I mean, yes. I, I was tying that with IoT mm -hmm. because IoT has some security issues. Right. So you can argue maybe there could some be some blockchain. Some security issues? <laughs> well, the surface area. So you know, the theme in the enterprise is you know cloud computing. There's right. no moat anymore, there's no firewall. Yeah. It's perimeterless security. Mm -hmm. Perimeterless problems. So that means the edge is a surface area. We've seen right. these attacks coming. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. so there's no silver bullet right now. So Samsung yeah. probably is cagey right now on the data. Exactly. We got some security products but smarter things is their kind of pitch. And, and then everybody keeps saying, well, who owns the security piece? Who's responsible for the security piece? I think that's a big question we're going to see popping up a lot because the security piece is going to be a very valuable uh, piece to all of this, especially when you're looking at edge computing too yeah. and, and data being passed back and forth between yeah. the, the edge. I, I would rather see everything stay with just the edge devices personally, but. Yeah, well, it's easier <laughs> to manage. Why do you yeah. want to move data across the network? Exactly. Move computers more efficient. All right, yeah. so final take on augmented reality VR. Oh, okay. What's imploding, what's imploded, <laughs> what's growing, what's rising, what's falling? Sure. I mean, we had a comment earlier, said mm -hmm. VR 1.0 is over. It really is. I, I yeah. personally think AR is where it's at. Um, I've watched a lot of things on the on the VR front, and and it was a lot of it was marketing speak. Yeah. Um, I think we need we need a bigger push on the hardware side for VR to work effectively too. Um, we also need to look at, at the audience there, and, yeah. and a, a lot of people are complaining that. Well, I, I don't want to just go disappear into a separate world. Uh, a lot of women actually are complaining about that side of it. But <laughs> the AR side, I think, has has way has way more application. Yeah. Um, Crawl, on walk, run in virtual space. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. V VR is. I think we'll still have a place, but yeah. I think AR is going to be the. One of the things we were talking about earlier was, you know, uh, as folks who've been through many waves, you and I have seen waves mm -hmm. of innovation. Web 1.0, the early adopters were the adult industry with banners, because yeah. they were about making money. We saw this wave, we're seeing the Silk Roads and blockchain. Arbitrage that comes from usually bad actors and not mm -hmm. necessarily desirable right. uh, actors. Um, but one big indicator of the current user experience that we're seeing is the gaming culture, right? Mm -hmm. Gaming right now seems to be the early adopter indicator mm -hmm. of the major trend lines, because it's, it's gamification, yep. it's a little bit of analog, Look multiplayer. Look at Unity, you know, Unity has a huge presence here at SDC, and you know, especially on the VR front, if you want to yeah. look at that, um, Unity is a, is a huge player there. What are some of the things you see coming out of the gaming world? Because we're seeing virtual currencies, mm -hmm. uh, hello, <coughs> mm -hmm. ICO. Yeah. Uh, Data, a lot of storage, a lot of dynamic, real time. Yeah. Well, gaming mechanisms too, um, across the board always yeah. play into this too, but I, I think the big one is ICOs for me. That's the one I've been focusing on a yeah. lot. Well, I'd love to follow yeah. more with you on the ICO thing. Mm -hmm. We're doing a whole programming on that on November 2nd. Mm -hmm. love Look to at have what you. Crystal Rose with Sensei's been doing. Who? Um, Crystal Rose, uh, Sensei, she's uh, launched her own ICO called Sense. Sense. Yep. Great, looking forward to mm -hmm. chatting Out of LA. more. Final um, question for you, for the folks not here. <laughs> What's the vibe here? What, how would you describe? SDC 2017. Uh, well, I, I love that there is a great vibe of innovation. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I've been to some other stodgier conferences lately, and this one definitely has a, a nice, playful, creative vibe. E2B is boring to boring. Vibe. Boring to boring. I know you, you were talking about E to E, everything to everything. See, I was listening. You were. Everything to everything, exciting, exciting to exciting. That's, See, I listened to that too. That's our tagline. So yeah, I, I would say it's, there's, there's a lot of creativity here. There's a lot of um, side conversations happening. Um, that, that's important. And I see a good balance of men and women, so that yeah. makes me happy. Well, I'm excited yeah. to have from Vanessa at uh, Any Context for bringing on a great lineup. Uh, you included. Thank you. Great to meet you in person. Have a great conversation. We're going to cool here. Inside the Cube <laughs> Power Cube, I'm John Furrier here. Exclusive coverage of the SDC 2017. <laughs> we'll be back after this short break. <laughs>